Top 25 Electrical Engineering Interview Questions and Answers Electrical engineering is one of the most common disciplines of engineering. Different companies such as electrical firms are always looking for quality electrical engineers to design, test, manage, and oversee electrical equipment manufacturing. Given the complexity of this field, electrical engineering questions are pretty challenging. It helps to prepare well lest you leave a wrong impression and lose your chance. Expect the interviewer to ask general, behavioral, and technical questions that test your understanding of theories and different concepts in engineering. This video looks at some of these questions to keep you one step ahead and help you land a job. Take a look. 1. What do you understand by electrical engineering? Explain some of its applications. Sample answer. It is a discipline in engineering that involves the study, design, and application of different devices, systems, and equipment that use electronics, electricity, and electromagnetism. It has several applications such as in diodes, electrical power systems, communication systems, digital and analog systems, DC and AC generators, among many more. 2. Why should we hire you? Sample answer. I am passionate about this field. I started learning and experimenting with electrical systems at a young age, which informed my decision to pursue electrical engineering. I greatly enjoy whatever we as electrical engineers do and constantly challenge myself to do better. I will use all my energy and expertise for the betterment of this firm if given a chance. 3. What do you specialize in? Sample answer. Most of my projects have been on industrial and residential engineering. Additionally, most long-term projects have been industrial, meaning that I have spent a relatively significant part of my career as an industrial engineer. Residential engineering mostly comes up in the short-term projects that I have been mandated with. I am also trying to learn more about signal processing, which I find enjoyable, I believe that I will be good to go once I have entirely understood its concepts and theories. Number 4. Out of all the engineering companies, why do you want to work with us? Sample answer. I have several reasons. First, I am a great fan of all the products you design and would like to be part of the production team that comes up with them. Your firm is industrial in nature, a field that I have vast experience, my services would therefore be better used here. I have also interacted with some of your former employees who still applaud your motivating work environment, even in their current workplaces. Lastly, I interned here shortly after leaving college and would be honored to be back at where it all started. 5. What are some of the projects that you have worked on? Sample answer. I have worked on a number of projects and in different positions. In the last one, I was the project lead. My team was mandated with obtaining substation parameters. We therefore calculated the voltage and current requirements, variable factors such as temperature, power requirements, and communication needs such as remote GMS. 6. From your CV, we can clearly see that you excelled well in your engineering degree. What are some of the courses that may have contributed to your exceptional performance? Sample answer. Most of the courses were pretty technical but manageable. I did very well in signal processing and circuitry, some of the core courses in electrical engineering. I also loved algebra and therefore performed exceptionally well in linear algebra. Out of all the courses, convex optimization was the most challenging, but I managed to do very well. Having been a coder from a young age, I also found the software classes enjoyable and did well. 7. What do you understand by an ideal transformer? Sample answer. First, it is essential to note that an ideal transformer is a fantasy transformer. It is a type of transformer that registers no losses, meaning that the input authority of the transformer is equal to its output authority. An ideal transformer is a hypothetical transformer that is 100% competent. 
it remains a fantasy since every genuine transformer must register some losses. 8. How is a tube light connected? Also, explain how it works. Sample answer. A tube light is connected by linking a chalk to one end of the tube light and a starter in sequence with the circuit. The starter breaks off the supply cycle of the alternating current when there is a supply making the chalk generate roughly 1000 volts. The voltage generated breaks the electrons in the tube, initiating electron flow. 9. How many software platforms that relate to your field are you conversant with? Sample answer. I have used a number of software in my projects both as a lead and team member. I use Clacculatorage in most of my projects, which is an essential software for electrical engineers. I have also used Electronics Bundle and E3 Series, which happens to be a necessary software. 10. Could you tell us the difference between alternating and direct current? Sample answer. Both of these are types of current flow in circuits. In direct current, the electric charge only flows in one direction. In alternating current, the electric charge periodically changes direction, just like the name suggests. One can also say that direct current lacks a return cable. Out of these two, alternating current is the most common. However, direct current also has its fair share of advantages such as less loss, longer travel distances, and cost effectiveness. Direct current comes in handy if you need more power. 11. Could you please mention some of the common cable types that electrical engineers use to transmit power? Sample answer. There are different cable types generally grouped by their size and capacity. Transmitting power falls under capacity. Here, there are three types of cables, low, high, and super tension cables. Low tension cables carry less than 1000 volts, high tension cables between 1000 and 23000 volts, whereas super tension cables can manage 66 to 132 kilo volts. 12. Suppose you were working on a project, and your colleagues had different approaches for arriving at a solution. How would you manage that? Sample answer. Before we begin solving a problem with my team, I first ensure that I know everyone's background and area of expertise. This helps me understand where they are coming from and their perspectives. It also opens up my mind to brainstorm other ideas. I would encourage everyone on the team to share their rough ideas or drafts in such a situation. We will discuss each approach, focusing on the advantages and disadvantages. I will also explain my idea and how it has worked before combining the most viable concepts with the team. 13. Tell us about a challenge that you have once experienced in this role. Sample answer. I almost fell behind schedule when working on a project. It proved to be challenging, and I still had other tasks to attend to. I had not stayed in this field for long, and was still getting the hang of project prioritization and multitasking. I talked to my colleagues and made them know that I was struggling. They had been in the field longer than me, and some offered to take some load off my shoulders. I managed to submit all projects on time. This occurrence also taught me the importance of teamwork. 14. Could you please tell us some of the advantages of controlling speed using a thyristor? Sample answer. A thyristor comes with its fair share of advantages when it comes to speed control. First, it is highly accurate, which is pretty vital in electrical engineering. It is also cost effective. Lastly, it has fast switching characteristics such as MOSFET, BJT, and IGBT, making it better than most of the available means. 15. What is an encoder and how does it function? Sample answer. An encoder is a device that transforms a signal or data into a code. This code may be used to compress or transmit information, encrypt or add redundancy to an input code, and even translate a code to another. It works through a programmed algorithm. 
This is notably easier if any part of the code is digital, although one can also do analog encoding through analog circuitry. 16. Could you please explain the PU concept in electrical engineering? Sample answer. PU in electrical engineering stands for per unit. It is usually used in a single line power distribution diagram, a huge electrical circuit with several components such as loads, transformers, and generators, all of different ratings. The PU concept is usually used to bring all these ratings into a common platform. In this case, the largest MVA and KV ratings are generally taken as the base values. To get the price per unit, you will divide the actual value of all other component ratings by the base value. 17. EOT cranes can either use VVVF drives or non-VVVF drives. Which ones are better and why? Sample answer. VVVF drives are better than their other counterparts for several reasons. They ensure that the crane does not experience load jerking, but a smooth start and stop. They also allow exact positioning and better motor protection. Other advantages include reduced controls, increased motor life, brake shoe reliability, selection of high or low speed, and programmable brake control. It is therefore quite evident that these drives are way better than their non-VVVF counterparts. 18. In your experience as an electrical engineer, why do you think vector grouping in power transformers is necessary? Sample answer. Vector grouping carries the information regarding the connection of the winding and the phase difference between voltage and current. This explains why every manufacturer provides a vector group listing on all transformers. 19. You must have come across a synchronous and asynchronous generator. What do you consider the difference between the two? Sample answer. The main difference between the two is that the former supply active and reactive power. In contrast, the latter, also known as an induction generator, only supplies active power and uses reactive power to magnetize. They are usually used in windmills. 20. What are the main types of DC generators? Sample answer. There only exist two types of DC generators. These are the separately excited and the self-excited generators. The latter is divided into series as well as shunt and compound, which is further subdivided into cumulative and differential. 21. What are the different types of exciters and how do they work? Sample answer. There exist two types of exciters, static and rotary. These devices supply excitation DC voltage to a generator's fixed poles. The exciter uses slip rings and brushes to deliver a direct current to the rotary poles for DC generators. For AC generators, the exciter's output is rectified by the rotating diodes and a direct current supplied to the primary fixed poles. 22. Could you please tell us the difference between a 4-point and a 3-point starter? Sample answer. Even though these two have a similar function, the shunt connection in the former exists separately from the line, whereas in a three-point starter, it exists in harmony with the line, which is its drawback. 23. Lightning arresters are different from surge arresters. What is the difference? Sample answer. A lightning arrestor is usually installed outside the building to prevent lightning strikes. In contrast, a surge arrestor is located in panels with resistors to nullify surge effects and consume extra energy. These two, therefore, differ in the locations of their installation and functions. 24. Why can't capacitors work on devices that rely on direct current? Sample answer. Capacitors work with alternating current because they produce infinite resistance to DC components but allow alternating current elements. 25. How does a circuit breaker work? Sample answer. A circuit breaker makes or breaks the circuit. It has fixed and moving contacts. When everything is okay, the moving and fixed contact form a closed contact, thus allowing the current flow. 
However, during power surges, an arc is formed between the fixed and moving contacts, creating an open circuit. Conclusion You can clearly see that most of these questions are technical. Therefore, ensure that you understand the different concepts and theories in electrical engineering before appearing before the interview panel. Also, remember to convince the interviewers that you are the perfect fit for the role by exuding high levels of confidence and an excellent understanding of concepts.